Well, hey there, YouTube. How y'all doing? Um, yeah, I've been. Uh, I want to make a video on this uh, sewing machine, and uh, I've also been requested to uh, show a few things about it. Um, first, I'll show you this uh, guitar strap I've been working on. If you remember my other video? Uh, it was inside out before, and uh, well, I got her turned right side out, and I figured out I got a. She's a little floppy up through here, so. Uh, now I'm in the process of stitching this side. Um, yeah, I'm going to stitch all the way along here and actually stitch the two layers together. I started to do it. Uh, fortunately, the the foot on my machine here is a little wore out, and uh, it tends to want to kick the uh, material out uh, um, when it's you know only halfway through like this. Um, yeah, maybe I'll figure something else out with that. I've got a smaller foot, but uh, and I'd have to readjust my um, my foot tension, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> I say I'm no tailor. Uh, don't know a whole lot about these uh, things other than uh, well, I've got an addiction to making things work. Um, yeah, here I'll go over this thing a little bit here. Let me uh, turn her. Turn the power on so I can get the, the actual light on there. And we'll turn our handy dandy uh, production lights on. <laughs> See if I can get them down to where I can actually uh, get some proper light on this sucker. They're kind of nice, kind of sear. Yeah, see this machine, um, I can't find out a whole lot about it other than I guess it was a um, old tailoring machine from the uh, 60s. It's pretty sturdy though. I mean, I've been running it through uh, multi layers of this military canvas, which uh, you guys have dealt with this stuff before. This is the same uh, type of material you'd use uh, to make the, the covers and everything for your uh, deuce and a halfs and uh, hummers. I guess they make tents out of it. Uh, you know, my dad when he was in the army was uh, what we call scrounge. You know, he uh, he knew people and traded things, and uh, God, we ended up with all kinds of stuff uh, that way. That's how I got this uh, thread I'm using up here, which we've never actually had a machine that uh, I could uh, you know use this stuff. I've just used it small amounts to tie things together and whatnot over the years. Yeah, I've probably had that roll of thread for 20 years. And this canvas, God, it's probably uh, been around as long as I have. Uh, it's still pretty good stuff. All right, back to the machine here. Now, what I can tell, um, it's got this double uh, tensioning mechanism here. I think at one time, this thing was actually set up to, uh, you know, with two needles. So it would actually stitch two uh, deals side by side. Um, you know, I'm not sure how that was set up. This is how... Uh, this is how she came set up when I got her. I believe it's missing a, missing an actual uh, needle holder there. Uh, right now the needle's kind of stuck up in there. It's how it was when I bought the thing. I only paid 50 bucks for this uh, machine here. Um, and uh, I say that's got its uh, issues. Um, say there's that this uh, foot. You can see how much movement I got in there. She's a little little funky. And then on my uh, on my actual, uh, you know, release here, or pressure uh, release, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, there's a piece in here. You can actually see this uh, piece above it. I've got my thumb on it right now. I think that's supposed to, on my other, my smaller machine, there's a little tab that sticks out so that you can actually pull it up farther. Um, that's actually been snapped off, so this doesn't work quite the way it should. Um, but it does work. Um, there's also a uh, lever inside, and then you have this uh, funky looking bag thing right here. Um, and I don't even have it really on because this, uh, there's a piece that's uh, one of the tabs that holds that lever is uh, snapped, and it still functions. I just don't, you know, want to stress it because it's only held on there by one. Um, one of these days I'll flip it up and uh, show you. Actually, I can do that right now. That's the nice thing about this machine. You can just kind of flip her back. You, you know, I've got this belt tensioned right now, but I can still, the way it's set up, you can still flip the thing over. Now, if you look, 
right there you can kind of see this uh, this uh, spring deal here I hope um, yeah see there's a tab that's broken right there this this uh, lever at ah, here hang on see I gotta have two hands to do this here ah oh, there we go see this lever that's a, a tensioner and there's supposed to be a tab right here and it is uh, non-existent there and I can see it kind of so there should be a there's one tab on the the other the far side there's supposed to be one here and it's broke but hey uh, you know I don't mind reaching around to get it so it works fine for my uh, my uh, purposes anyway here um let's see what else on this thing uh this is also a zigzag machine um this is how you set your uh, zigzag stitching this is how you set it for uh, right or left stitching um that all works seems to work pretty good this is your uh your actual uh you know uh, stitches per whatever here you know so you can set it uh for smaller stitches or longer stitches or shorter or longer stitches I guess you'd say just by turning that knob and then on the back side here we have uh, this lever down here this is our forward and reverse right now it's in uh, right now it's in drive <laughs> and uh, here, I'll just flip it and there now we're in reverse so that's how that works and I'll pull it back around now we're back in uh, forward uh, yeah, stitch it in reverse, kind of fun. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of an overview on this sucker. Um, now down here on the motor, now what you have is you have a, uh, I guess it's got like a clutch in it there. Uh, you know, when you turn it on, when you spool up the motor here, I'll, I'll do it. My fingers, make sure your fingers are clear when you spool this son of a bitch up because it's deadly. It really, uh, really could hurt you in a hurry. Okay, let me put the pressure foot down on some material there. Alright, so now when you turn the sucker on, see that motor spins up and it's running. Um, so now, when I actually hit the, uh, so I got the foot pedal down here, when I hit that pedal, I'm going to try to watch my hands because this thing will eat you. And I don't have the clutch quite set right, I don't think. So when I, I pull that bar out, see. So yeah, she takes right off. Ugh. And uh, yeah, of course my thread just snapped. Something to do with the. I think my needles get a little uh, dirty there. All right, and one thing when you switch her off, you can still hear that motor. I just turned the switch off. This thing will spin down for a good minute. It seems like even longer. Um, so what you want to make sure of, and I did this when I first got the machine set up. This uh, rear lock was all crudded up, so uh, it wouldn't um, actually disengage from the machine. So if you step back on the pedal, it kind of pushes that brake more, and then you just. Ah, come on. There we go. Spin the knob out, and then I'm going to let the uh, pressure off the motor. Um, otherwise, say you're going to change your uh, thread or whatever, and um, you didn't let that, uh, that uh, motor wind down, and you were under here, and yeah, you accidentally stepped on the uh, pedal, and it stitched right through your finger. Um, which, yeah, it doesn't sound like a, a promising uh, thing to me. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of an overview on the machine. Um, as far as the table goes, um, it sat outside for a number of years. The the, the um, guy that had this thing, uh, he was an upholstery guy, I guess, and um, he died a few years back. And his kids finally got around to getting the house cleaned up. Well, this thing had been sitting out, you know, not the machine itself. The machine was in the garage. But the table had been sitting outside for a couple of hours, or I mean, a couple of years at least probably longer than that um, so the the top laminate here has come loose notice I got these uh, this clamp here I'm um, holding this board down well that's kind of actually holding the end of the veneer down for now I'm gonna re-glue that and I'll probably get to that here in the next few days there's the bobbin mechanism there um, you just uh, 
latch it forward onto the the belt there and uh, got your bobbin here and then you thread it there and uh, then you like I said you make sure that uh, this isn't engaged and so it just spins this and uh, yeah she actually does a pretty good job of winding the bobbin out um, I probably don't have that set up quite properly uh, I gotta say I'm winging it um, there's the bottle number on this machine it is a singer I believe it's for about a 1960 from what I can tell. Like I say, I haven't been able to find a whole bunch of information out about it. Um, any of you guys that got any insight on it or uh, know anything about these things, uh, your comments and uh, everything would be appreciated. Um, alrighty, well, that's it for now. Um, I, I might put add some more to this video here in a bit. Uh, I'm going to get back to work on that guitar strap, so maybe I'll do some video of that, although I'm kind of scared. I guess say I am a, what you would say, an amateur, for sure. Um, up there, one of these days, I'll bring it down. Let's see if I can't zoom in on it. That's my other machine, and that's an old 1940s Kenmore. And that's the first thing, first machine I ever uh, screwed around with, and... Uh, yeah, it's just a tiny thing compared to this singer. Oh yeah, there's a, another project for one of these days. Uh, yeah, you can see the fuel bottle up front over. Uh, I haven't run that truck in a couple of years. Uh, we'll get her out one of these days. I need to get a few more things for it. Alright, I'll talk to you in a few.